Good afternoon, everyone. It is Christine here, and I'm back for another exciting episode of our Stitch Along. And our stitch today is the Antique Stitch, and it was suggested by Kimberly, so thank you very much, Kimberly. And it's also known by a number of other names, so it's known as the Romanian Couching Stitch, the Indian Filling Stitch, the Janina Stitch, or the Oriental Stitch. And these are all names that are used for a technique whereby a long stitch is tied down in the center by one short slanting stitch. So I've done a little sample of it um, down below here, which I'm then going to repeat above. And then I'm thinking we could try it on a leaf shape and see what that looks like. So I suggest you start by drawing yourself if you've got a pen like a friction marker or another marker that you can use on fabric that erases or it doesn't matter too much if it doesn't erase because you can't really see it underneath where the stitching was anyway. Um, but draw yourself a long rectangle and then put a little banding section um, in the middle. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, it's just a bit of a bit of a guide. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my needle through from the back with a knot in the thread at the top left of the rectangle. Got a long piece of thread because we are going to be doing a bit of up and down. And then I'm going to take my needle back in at the bottom left of the rectangle. Now I'm not using my hoop today just to show that you don't need a hoop necessarily. Um, what you'll just want to do periodically is lay it flat on the surface. Now I'm going to pop my needle back up at that middle banding line, but on the um, right hand side of that longer thread that we just, or that longer stitch that we just stitched. And then I'm going to pop my needle back down on the other side, the left hand side of that stitch that we just did at that top banding line. So it's going to create a diagonal, diagonal stitch. So if you can see, the stitch is going from the bottom inside to the um, top outside of that banding section. And what it's going to do is tie down or couch down our longer stitch so it holds it, essentially holds it in place and stops it flapping around so much. And so I'm going to pop up again from the top of our rectangle next to that first stitch and take my stitch down, pop down next to that first stitch at the bottom, take my needle through. So you'll have a, a flappy, flappy stitch next to your first stitch. So again, you're going to pop up on the right hand side at the bottom of that, that banding section. Just be careful not to skewer the thread, um, the stitch that you've just done. And then you're going to pop your needle through at the top of that banding section but on the left hand side of your thread so again making that diagonal couching stitch and so we're just going to keep on doing that popping up at the top of the rectangle taking our stitch to the bottom going in and then popping our needle up at the bottom of that banded section on the right hand side of the stitch that we just did and then popping our needle back in on the left hand side of the stitch we just did at the top of that banding section so again pop out at the top of the rectangle pop down to the bottom of the rectangle next to the stitch that you just did And don't worry if it's not perfect, if it gets a bit crooked, you'll still have the effect of the, the stitch. So then popping the needle back up on the right hand lower band line of next to the stitch. And then popping the needle back in at the top band line on the left hand side of the stitch. So if you can see... It's just making um, those little diagonal cross stitches, but it almost looks like a continuous stitch. It's just being held down. I hope you can't hear my grumbling to me. I <laughs> don't know why it's grumbling, really. Maybe it wants to talk about stitches too. Okay. So we'll just pop that down. 
do our long stitch. And when you are not using a um, embroidery hoop, it's good just to lay it flat once in a while to make sure it's not getting bunched up. So we're going to pop out with our needle again at that lower banding line on the um, right hand side of the stitch we just did and then the upper banding line on the left hand side and couch that stitch down. And then we'll just keep keep doing that all the way across. I hope you're having a super day. Thanks to those that um, joined in the um, live premiere. So it's a bit different to a live broadcast where I'm not sure how it actually differs from a, a live broadcast. Oh, in the live broadcast, um, you're actually, no, I do know the difference. I think I was just having a mental blank there. You're actually presenting live and so you're responding to comments in real time. The premiere function just allows you to schedule your video for a particular time and allows other people to watch um, the playing of the video in real time. And I'll, I also join in and am available in that chat. So we can have a chat together in real time. But we can also just chat in the comments as well. So I'll have a play around with yeah, using that Premiere function and um, if it's kind of working and if people are wanting to jump into the, um, the chat, um, well, yeah, I can keep doing it. So I've scheduled it for nine o'clock in the evenings. Um, that way... Hopefully it will work for most people in most parts of the, the world. Sometimes tricky because I'm often sleeping when people, for example, in the US or the, the UK are wide awake. Again, just at that banding point, putting a stitch in. Oh, I think I've done made that stitch now. Which one's the, my outside stitch? That's my outside one there. They were just starting to cross over a little bit. I'll see if I can just make sure it stays nice and nice and straight. go so again just popping out with the needle at that lower banding on the right hand side of the longer stitch and then on the left hand side popping in at that upper upper banding point so again just a nice repetitive sort of motion that you can can do and hopefully because we're we're all we're all doing our stitching. Hopefully it's kind of going to be stuck in our, our minds and we can draw on it when we're, when we're doing other stitchery projects. Or we can open our book and our little book of stitchery or our little sampler where we've put our stitches and that will prompt us to remember. So next up is going to be, um, we're going to do the Armenian edging stitch. So I'll recap on that at the end of this. So don't worry about writing it down for now. Oops, I think I just came up through my actual thread. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to skewer your stitch because it won't then couch down properly. Just going to unthread that there. Okay. And I think probably just one more stitch for this one, and then we can have a go at the leaf shape and see how that goes. Maybe it'll be two stitches, I'm not sure. fine with just the one stitch. I can't even see where my little banding marker was now so having a little oops again trying to make sure I don't skewer don't skewer the fabric or the thread sorry 
it's okay to skewer the, the fabric but not the thread. So there we go. That is, and as you can see on the back, you get a really cute little um, divided pattern. tight so again just stretching it out to make sure that it stays as it should okay and so for the leaf shape I will draw a little band down the middle of that I think we'll see how this goes I haven't done a leaf shape yet in this um, put that in my little orts jar hopefully I don't know if this will be long enough for the leaf but we'll give it a go we can always re-thread if needed. Okay. So I guess at the bottom, we're just not going to be doing this stitch because it's so narrow. So we'll just start off with some stitches. And I guess the real benefit of this stitch is when you've got those longer stitches that would otherwise be a bit floppy if they weren't couched down. We just need to do a stitch in between that one, the first one and that one. Okay, so I think we can now go and start doing um, the antique stitch. So we'll go from the top or that side of the leaf. We'll come down to this side of the leaf. And then we'll bring our needle up at that band banding point on one side. And then at the banding point on the other side, we will go down. You can't really see it that much when it's um, just these sort of narrower sections, but we'll just keep going up and we'll see the effect that we get. That might be a bit far across. So always bringing the thread down from the same, from the top. Again, just popping out at the bottom of that banding section and then taking the needle over the thread at the top of the banding section there. So as our stitches get longer, the couching stitch is going to become more useful in holding it down. Oops, pop out at the top, almost popped out at the middle. Don't need to show you the wrong way to do it. So popping out at the bottom of that banded section. Sorry, it is a bit bit small on, on this leaf, so a bit harder to see. That's why I did definitely want to use the rectangle to, to show you the technique. Another longer stitch. Popping out at the bottom of the band, popping, catching it down on the other side. So I've previously done leaves where I did sort of stitches on either side of the leaf, but this is possibly a time-saving method because you can just do the longer stitches all the way across and then um, 
yeah, get that effect of the vein down the middle. Oops, just bunched it up, so I'm just going to flatten it out to make sure it's not going to stay bunched up. Continuing to couch down the stitches in that middle banding area. And again, probably as you get practiced with this stitch, you wouldn't need to have the, the template nece necessarily drawn. But as I think I've mentioned, I just find it takes a little bit of the, um, makes even the stitching even more relaxing, I think, because you're not having to concentrate on exactly where you're going with your bigger design. You can just focus on the stitches and kind of lose yourself a bit in the stitches not have to be focusing on the big picture because you've actually mapped your bigger picture out with the with the pattern oh, i think i've managed to pull a thread through or something but that's okay possibly two threads there we go they were just bits of fabric thread not the actual thread So again, popping up on one side of the longer stitch and then popping down on the other side at that slanted angle. So I am just so thrilled with how many of you are stitching along. It really makes me so very happy to know that across space and time we are, we are stitching together. always wanted to be part of a, a stitching circle and so I'm very happy to be part of a virtual one and I just love how um, yeah you're all contributing you know ideas or having a look through your books and saying hey here's a stitch we could do so it's definitely a collaborative um, project which is what I wanted It's going to be amazing to see how many stitches we actually um, end up end up doing. Oops. I don't know if that stitch was too loose. No, I think that's okay. I just give it a little needle pull that way and that way. Nope, that's better. Hopefully, we have enough thread to get this done. Don't you hate it when you have to just sort of re-thread right at the end of a a project that's always a bit frustrating. I think the threading and the um, probably the threading of the needles and kind of yeah that having to stop the rhythm of the stitching um, yeah it's not my favorite part of the stitchery I love when I'm just in the flow stitching away. So I can't remember if I said I hope you're having a good day or a good evening but I do hope you are. I hope if you're watching it, it means um, you've got some, yeah, some time for some crafty relaxation or that you have some planned for some point in the day. Or even if you can't do it today, hopefully you're, you're planning the next time that you will be able to sit down and um, whether it's on your porch, for those of you that are in warmer climes, it's another icy day icy day here so definitely not porch sitting weather here but I know some of you are getting much much warmer weather there seem to have gone slightly angled but I don't think it's going to be a problem for a leaf because a leaf can be kind of twisted across on its on its axis so 
so I don't think I'll need to for these smaller stitches here. Maybe that one I'll still do as a couched stitch. But I don't know if the last one I'll need to do. I think this final stitch I'll just be able to pop across as a normal, normal stitch. And then maybe one last one at the very, very top. And we've just managed to do it with our thread, which is great. So, there we go. That's how it looks. So I think it does give a lovely, lovely leaf effect. That's almost like a leaf hanging, hanging down onto the, onto the piece. Um, but also great, um, almost reminds me of sort of flags over here. So that is the antique stitch hopefully um, I managed to stay on camera most of the time and I think I possibly glimpsed that I wasn't always on camera um, perfectly well but bear with me I'll get better and so as I mentioned tomorrow we're going to be doing Armenian edge stitch and what you might want to do like I've done is just create um, two edges um, I've just done the top and the bottom edge where I've ironed it over or you could just um, stitch it down if your fabric doesn't iron as sort of crisply as this does because we're going to be doing some edge work um, along the bottom edge and the top edge if you want to or you could do the side side edges but I'm going to do the top and the bottom and um, if you want to write your um, the name of the stitch ahead of time in back stitch yeah you can write down Armenian edge or just Armenian if you wanted to so that will be tomorrow's stitch and that's another one that Kimberly suggested. So thanks, Kimberly. So thanks for joining me again. I'll let you go and hopefully I'll see you back for our next episode. Bye everyone.